This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga 6th Gen, or Gen 6. So, as you might guess, it's been around the block a few times, but now we have a redesign and a new color, this kind of storm gray thinking thing going on here, and instead of the usual, you know, matte black ThinkPad-y look, and we have kind of cut off shiny silver sides. So, it looks fine, that's nice and all, but it does look pretty good. It's still, as ever, a slim and light 14-inch convertible with 360-degree hinges, this time updated with Intel 11. 11th gen CPUs with Intel Iris XE graphics, a new 16 by 10 aspect ratio display with four different display options to choose from, and Thunderbolt 4. We're going to look at it now. So those sound like some good upgrades right there. Well, we've got a couple of other things too. Now you can get optional 4G or 5G for WN connectivity being a business two-in-one ultrabook. Well, you've got to have that kind of thing. We have Wi-Fi 6 on board as well. And of course, the usual touch plus pen support and the pen that lives in a silo on the side of the laptop, which uses Wacom AES Active Technology on board. The display options on this, uh, they, there may be four, but it's not as bad as it seems or as confusing. So we have the full HD plus, because plus because it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead of 16 by 9. And you can get that with a kind of a matte finish or with a glossy finish, which is a nice thing to have that matte finish option because, well, glossy glares. That's 400 nits. There's a 500 nit privacy display option, and there's what we had this time, which is the full Monty 4K wide gamut option. So they say 500 nits for that, and they ain't lying. That's what we measured a little bit better than that. And 90% of P3, we actually measured even higher, 98% of P3. So it's also a very color accurate display, one of the most color accurate that I've seen, which is nice, considering this isn't a mobile workstation for the CAD crowd or the 3D render crowd, it's not something that you come to expect, and I'm happy that it's here. And experientially, it's a very nice display, and it supports a Dolby Vision as well. So, nice stuff so far. It weighs 3 pounds, which is 1.35 kilograms, so for a 14-inch convertible, that's pretty light. And it's pretty slim, too, 14.9 millimeters, so it's thin enough. But if you want it even thinner, there is the X1 Titanium Yoga that we recently reviewed that costs more money. It's a little thinner even, it's a little bit lighter as well, but not as structurally rigid as this aluminum chassis here, because titanium is just a bit more flexible, and it has lower key travel versus this one. Personally, I would pick this one over the titanium model. I think you've been getting that idea already. But you can watch that review. We have a link in the description so you can check that one out as well if you want. So since this is a business laptop, connectivity is important. No dongle life for you here. We do have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, full 40 gigabit per second, so you've got that for your docks and whatever else you want to connect, fast peripherals. We have two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so one on each side, so your legacy mice and whatever else you're plugging in, good to go. And HDMI 2.0, plus a headphone jack. And if you do go with the WN option, there'll be a nano SIM card slot on board. RAM is soldered on this, and it's fast RAM. You can see the specs on screen for this, and you can get it with up to 32 gigs of RAM, so 8, 16, 32, and it's got an M.2 NVMe SSD. Ours was PCIe 3, not PCIe 4, which this platform does support, which would be even faster, but anyway, you can go up to a terabyte for storage on that. The pricing on this is surprisingly not painful because the X1 is the halo line for Lenovo. They're not cheap, let's put it that way. And right now it starts at around 1176 US dollars, which is, well, cheap for an X1 Yoga, honestly. And it's not a garbage configuration either. It's a Core i5 with a full HD plus display, 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. So it's something you can get by with, certainly, but obviously you can spend more money. Our configuration is around $1,750. $50 or so with that 4K display and a Core i7 and there's 16 gigs of RAM. The power button has been moved to the keyboard deck instead of being on the side. I think people asked for that, so well, Lenovo did it. The fingerprint scanner is embedded in the power button and it worked fine for us. There is an optional Windows Hello IR camera and that comes with the presence detection feature, so it goes to sleep, or sleeps the display if you walk away, and if you walk up to it, and it says, oh, hello, it's you, and it uses the Windows Hello IR camera to log you in. That's great as long as you don't need to leave a task running when you don't want it to go to sleep, like us when we do benchmarks, but you can always turn that off if you don't like it. And there's a webcam privacy shutter. It's the usual 720p, okay, webcam. 
Keyboard on this has 1.3 millimeters of key travel, which by today's laptop standards is pretty normal. And again, it's thick, deeper than the titanium editions keyboard on this. Experientially, it feels quite nice. The ThinkPad keyboards just are ergonomic, tactile feeling things with nice key return, good when you depress it, you feel like you're going somewhere, it doesn't bottom out hard like XPS laptops typically do. The usual smile-shaped keys, you get the idea. It's a nice typing experience, backlit in white, the usual FN plus spacebar. Well, turn the backlight on. Trackpad on this is quite good, and you have the usual track point eraser stick pointer with two dedicated buttons for that. In terms of performance, it's an Ultrabook with Intel U Series 28 watt CPUs, and the cooling is sufficient to actually allow the processor to run at 28 watts pretty consistently. It'll go even higher for a while, but then it'll fall back to, well, 28 watts. Uh, you can get it with Core i5 and Core i7 options, and vPro is there for you if you need that as well. In terms of performance, it's exactly where we expect it to be. When it comes to thermals, we now have two smaller fans instead of one large fan, and it does seem to be fairly effective at exhausting heat from this relatively thin aluminum chassis. And of course, Intel Iris Xe graphics, as we know, on Tiger Lake is a step up certainly from previous generation integrated graphics. So if you're going to play a little casual gaming when you're not working, you can do that or give a little extra boost to Photoshop, that sort of thing. I mean, honestly, for casual Photoshop use, this is perfectly adequate. The stereo speakers on this, like many ThinkPads, are actually more loud, more full than you would expect. They're not bad given uh, the size of the laptop, and you've got several microphones here for better audio quality when you're constantly zooming day in and day out. This has a 57 watt hour battery, which for a 14 inch thin and light convertible is actually a pretty high capacity battery, and it comes with Lenovo's usual 65 watt rapid charger. Battery life on this has been very good. Tiger Lake is a reasonably efficient platform, and we've averaged 11 to 12 hours with brightness set to 150 nits, doing light to moderate productivity work and streaming video. The usual caveats there. If you're pushing it really hard, you are doing Photoshop or compiling code all the time, it'll be shorter. If you run the display brighter, it will be shorter. But that's pretty healthy battery life. Opening it up is very easy. Five Phillips head screws and then just give a yank from the back and there's our aluminum cover. And here are our internals. Uh, not too, too much you can do here. Like most Ultrabooks, you could replace your battery. That's right over here. This is where the M.2 SSD is, the usual 2280 height, so you could upgrade that if you wish to. Here's our two small fans that replace the previous one large fan that they use, or a large urn. And the CPU under the heat sink, this is the slot for the WAN card, it's another M2 shorty slot, so if you want 4G or 5G, that's where that would go. If you want that, order it with it, because otherwise you don't get the full antenna assembly that's also required. And lastly, Wi-Fi is soldered on right here, so you won't be upgrading that. And our speaker drivers are pretty good size. No wonder they don't sound bad. They're right over here flanking the battery, which is typically where speakers are on a laptop. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 6. And as always, Lenovo does the right things with this. There's a reason why this is one of the most popular two-in-one business business convertible Ultrabooks. You've got a pen, you've got a thin design, you've got a new look with an aluminum chassis, Thunderbolt 4, 11th gen CPU is a new 16 by 10 aspect ratio display going all the way up to 4K if you want, and a pretty decent keyboard too, which we would expect from a ThinkPad. So all in all, it's still a nice piece. And it shares a lot of its DNA with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 9th gen as well. So basically this is for those of you who want a convertible with touch and pen support versus a traditional laptop design on the carbon. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.